everyone. This is Rob Gray from Arizona State University and the Perception in Action podcast, and this is vlog number four. Today I want to talk about the process of perceptual motor adaptation. And I also want to show you a really fun exercise you can use for a variety of different things. You can use it for research, studying the process of perceptual motor adaptation. You can use it for labs and anything from university to high school classes. And it's also a great, fairly cheap demo to use to, sh to show kids and teach them about perception and action. Okay, so what am I talking about here? Well, imagine you're a football quarterback and you're having a great game and you're throwing your favorite pass to your favorite receiver a 10 yard out. Okay, so you're throwing the ball perfectly 10 yards right to the receiver. Well, now your arm starts to get tired or a big wind appears in your face. What's going to happen here is there's going to be created a, essentially a misalignment between your perception and your action now, right? So the muscle activity in your arm that used to produce a perfect 10 yard throw is not going to produce that anymore, right? The wind's going to knock it back or because your arm's tired, it's not going to go as far. So what we're going to have to do is adjust our movement based on the perception, right? Maybe throw the ball a little bit earlier or, or do something else, okay? And this is what we mean by adaptation, adjusting to some kind of performance error. And if you listen to my podcast on perceptual learning, what we better might call this is calibration, okay? Recalibration. So we're not changing really how we're doing the action, we're just recalibrating how our action is related to our perception, okay? So there's several reasons in sports why we, why we might have to do this. You know, I already talked about a couple, weather, fatigue, there could also be a change in equipment, you know, change in surface friction. All, there's lots of different reasons we could do it. And in terms of alignments, in terms of these misalignments, there's basically kind of two characteristics we can look at. We can have spatial misalignments. So there's a misalignment in terms of the direction, for example, or the distance or we can have temporal misalignments, somehow in the timing of the action. And alignments can also be constant, okay? So there's a, you know, a constant misalignment. For example, if someone knocked a gun sight, right, it would be off by a constant amount. Or there can be a variable misalignment. That's where the, the misalignment is constantly changing. An example of that, so example of a, a variable temporal misalignment is that if you are trying to play a video game online over a very weak connection, right? You're going to get a huge lag. A lag is a misalignment, and it's probably going to be very variable, right? It's going to be constantly changing. And if you experience that, you know that variable alignments are really difficult to ad adapt to. Okay? So how do we study it? Okay? Well, you basically need a couple things. One of the easiest ways to study this process of perceptual motor adaptation or calib recalibration is using prism glasses, okay? So if you remember back to your, your days of physics, or if you're taking it now, a prism is a triangular, glass, a triangular piece of glass, okay, in this case it's plastic, and what it does is it bends light, right? So the light comes in, takes a sharp turn before it gets to your eye, okay? And, you know, that's why you can see the colors of the spectrum and things like that, okay? What this does practically in terms of my vision, so if, we, if I put these on, right, the bending of the light is going to create a spatial misalignment, okay? So light coming from, if I had a light on top of my camera, light coming that's coming straight ahead of me is going to look like it's offset to the right a bit, okay? Depending on the direction of the prisms. These prisms actually offset everything, the offset everything a bit to the, to the left, okay? So, um, depending on how, which, you can wear them either way around, okay? So, these are fairly cheap. These are, these are ones that I bought. These are $15 a pair. So, again, a great demo to use. You can get a bunch of them, um, and it's fun. So, what do you do with these? There's a variety of e things you can do to illustrate this effect, okay? But one of the simplest ways is one of the simplest things you can do is with darts, okay? So this is a magnetic dartboard, which I'd recommend using as opposed to a real one for a couple of reasons. One is, as you'll see in a second, I'm gonna demo this, you're going to miss the, the board, right? When you put the prism glasses on, because it's going to look like the bullseye is over there, 
okay? So you're gonna miss the board, so you're probably gonna put holes in your wall if you use real darts. The other thing is if you use a real dartboard with wire on it, and this is something I almost learned the hard way myself, is if you use real darts and they hit a wire and come back to you, that it's very hard to move out of the way because your vision's not very clear with these on, okay? So what we're gonna do with these, in this, uh, if you wanna illustrate perceptual mode of adaptation, and this, as I said, this is a great activity to do. It's a huge bunch of fun for a big group. Everybody laughs. You can get one person wearing the prism, one purpose, person getting the darts, one person scoring, and you can get students to do a lot of different analyses on, the, on this. You can get them to learn about variable error, constant error, a whole bunch of things. So it's a great demo. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, what you're gonna do, what you wanna do with this is you wanna have a person throw several darts without the glasses on, aim for the bullseye, and you're essentially gonna measure their error, how far left or right is it from the in from the bullseye. Then you're gonna get them put the glasses on and do a bunch of throws, okay, and you'll see what happens. And then you can, uh, after they've kind of uh, adapted to them, you want them to take them back off and make a few, a bunch of more throws. And if you have enough time, you can keep alternating between glasses off, glasses on, and see what happens, okay? So now I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna go over and throw some darts and show you kind of a quick demo of what this looks like. Okay. First, I'm going to throw with the prism glasses off. Okay, now I'm gonna put them on. Let's see what happens. Hopefully I don't break my camera. Okay, now I'm going to take the prism glasses off again after doing several throws. Okay, so you saw that that was the demo. Uh, that's pretty much always what happens. I've done this, been doing this for years. I've never ever seen someone not uh, make errors when they're doing this. So, uh, not produce this pattern. So, uh, it's a very, very foolproof thing to do. So, let, let's look at what more detail what was going on. So, the typical way you plot this, let me see if I can get this up, is, you know, you plot a graph with uh, errors. So, it, on the line is the bullseye. Uh, missing above is missing right is above missing below is left okay so what you saw is if i look at you know throwing without the prisms okay so throwing without prisms my if you can see that the black line that's my kind of errors right i'm pretty close to the bullseye okay i'm pretty close to the bullseye and i don't have any consistent missing right or left right so no consistent pattern then i put the prisms on and if you're paying attention, you notice that um, depending on the way I was wearing them, I missed the left side of the dartboard. And I missed by quite a large amount to start. Okay, so drawing the curve, what this is going to look like, right? So if you can see that line. So I'm starting the red line. I start with a huge error to start with, okay? Missing the way to the left. And then if I keep practicing, um, I'll get better and better until I start hitting, getting close to the bullseye. Okay? And I didn't do enough throws to, but if you do enough of them, you, you will get back almost to normal performance. Okay? Then what happens when I take him off? Okay? When you take the glasses off after you adapted and gotten back to hitting the bullseye, um, what you'll see is that this is the most fun part when you do with the demo, because it's one thing to make people hit the wall and miss the dartboard completely while they're wearing the glasses, right? That's kind of what you might expect. 
Um, but what you, um, when you can get them to miss the dartboard completely while they're wearing nothing but their own eyes, right, it's quite convincing. So what you get when you miss, when you take the glasses off, obviously, as you, you saw, I missed to the right, okay? So now I get this blue line, I'm missing to the other side, okay? So I'm, I'm missing to that. So that's the kind of the basic pattern you get. As I said, you can get people to calculate and plot errors and things. But what happens if you keep doing this over and over? Okay, so if I keep uh, alternating between glasses on and glasses off. Well, what happens is, okay, so the next time I wear the red glasses, uh, next time I put the glasses back on, so the red line, what I'll see is something like this. Okay. I don't know if you can see that with the X's. So what you'll see is I'm still making errors, okay? So I'm still probably going to miss, I might miss the board on my first shot or miss right to the side of the dartboard, but it's not going to be as much, okay? And this little difference here, okay, this little improvement the second time I do it is called the savings, okay? It's called savings in motor learning. So when I go back to doing the same thing I've already done, I can get back to being a good performer quicker. Okay, so I have a little savings. And the same thing will happen with the blue. And you, this, what will happen, and I've done this several times myself, is if you keep doing it over and over and over, eventually you'll get to the point where you can pretty much throw perfectly right away. Okay, so you almost have a, a complete savings. So as soon as I put the glasses on, I can throw to the almost to the bullseye. As soon as I take them off, I can throw the bullseye. What's essentially happening here, I think, is you're storing separate calibrations, okay? Um, and so you can automatically switch between them, okay? And a real life example I would give of this, of this perceptual motor adaptation calibration process is when you're having uh, driving a car, and I call this the rental car effect, right? So when you get a rental car for the first time, often what happens is you'll um, get some, you'll get the, you'll step on the brake the first time and you'll brake really suddenly, right? Because the brake is tighter than you're used to and you re have to recalibrate your foot action um, to, to brake properly, to make it brake comfortably. But if you, so eventually you'll adapt to this and you'll begin to brake smoothly. And with, maybe if you go back to your own car, you might initially have the opposite effect. You might brake too late or something like that. But what you'll notice, for example, if you switch between your car and your significant other's car, you'll notice no issues at all, right? Because you, I think you essentially store a calibration separately for each of the cars, okay? So this is the process of perceptual motor adaptation. There's tons of research using prisms, okay? Dart, with dartboards, with walking, with reaching. And there's a lot of really interesting studies. Uh, there's some research showing the brain areas that seem to be involved in this process. For example, people with brain injury to the cerebellum don't seem to adapt. Okay, there's also research showing it's involving the prefrontal cortex. So have a look out for that. There's a lot of things that's there. And also, one of the things that we've started to do with this is look at kinematics. So look at the actual throwing action. And what we find is, although you can get back to hitting the bullseye, you don't quite do exactly the same kind of motion okay, after you adapted. You, you can actually see this. If you actually see this when you if you watch someone do it, they'll use kind of a reach out and around throw instead of their normal dart throw. Okay, so it's a, as I said, it's a real fun thing. I'll put a link for where I bought those. You can get them quite a few different places. The prism glasses, I said they were they were fifteen dollars. There are much better ones. You can also get ones that are up up down inverted, which are fun too. Um, you can get much. These ones are as I said, fairly cheap, so they're they're kind of unclear to see through, but. Um, you know, so they're not the best in that way. But, uh, but anyway, that's the, uh, the uh, perceptual motor adaptation.